Good morning, everybody. Northrop Canyon, Saturday morning. It's mid mid April. Still feels like winter. For goodness' sake, are you kidding me? Well, this is a special place for many reasons, and even though Steamboat Rock and the Grand Coulee are nearby, I'd like to talk about the granite that makes up the floor and portions of the wall of this really interesting canyon called Northrop Canyon. Hope you enjoy this episode today. So have you ever wondered what it looks like underneath the German chocolate cake of Eastern Washington? Yeah, me too. But here in Northrop Canyon, in Northern Washington, you can actually see what's underneath the flood basalt. Big color change, right, between the blonde granite and the chocolate brown flood basalts that are 16 million years old. So yeah, there's some Ice Age flood history where the floods came through here and ripped a bunch of basalt and granite, and granite, out of this country. But I like this view right here because we can see that the topography of the granite was not flat when the lava came in. In other words, there's kind of a beautiful contact between the underlying Northrop Canyon granite and the overlying Columbia River basalt lava. And I don't know, there's what? Uh, nobody really knows the absolute age, the precise age of this granite in Northrop Canyon, but let's pick a number, uh, 50. Maybe it's 50 million years old. Maybe it's 70 million years old. But you know, on the young side, let's say this is 50 million year old granite. And right on top is 16 million year old basalt. So that's quite an unconformity. Not only that, there's this change in elevation of the granite contact, which gives us a nice little time capsule to realize that there was a granite knob here, and there are many other granite knobs that existed for maybe tens of millions of years. So what I'm trying to say is that when the basalt lava, which is like chocolate syrup, flowed in here, making Steamboat Rock and making this wall, the chocolate syrup was not flooding a perfectly flat billiard table. We had a granite billiard table that had all sorts of ups and downs. All right. So I don't know how the mic is doing with the breeze, but I, I think I found a spot around the corner up here that's nice and uh, protected from the wind, which is a skill that you learn if you live in eastern Washington. You leave field trips and everybody's shivering in the wind. You're like, come over here. It's nice and nice and calm. All right, so the maps haven't flown away yet. So I don't want to spend 20 minutes on this, but let's let's just get a sense of this. So this is a, a beautiful old map that was a hand-me-down, published in 1961. And uh, I don't know who did this, Bud Clucking or Don Ring maybe, or maybe Bob Bentley or Jack Powell. But uh, I inherited it and I use it, even though it's a very old map. It's about my age. <laughs> um, but if we look at the state of Washington as a whole, um, maybe you get a sense that all of this area, the southeastern third of the state of Washington, has been buried by Columbia River basalt lava. Okay? Now, I left Ellensburg at uh, 7 o'clock this morning. Oh, this is before the freeway <laughs> on this map. And it took me a couple hours. Dry Falls is here. Banks Lake, which is water pumped out of the Columbia and sitting in the floor of the upper Grand Coulee. And we are here. And it says MZG. So if you take this map from 1961, Keller Mountain is made out of MZG. 
MZG, MZG, all this pink on this old state map, including Cool Grand Coulee Dam itself, anchored in MZG. Well, what's MZG? Well, it's just Mesozoic granite. It's about as broad as you can get, right? So it's like, how old is that? How old is MZG? Well, Mesozoic. Well, I don't know. That doesn't do much for me. Granite from the age of the dinosaurs? That's what this is? We can do better than that. We can look at this map from the Washington DNR by Eric Schuster, 1992, the year that I moved to Ellensburg and started teaching geology. Again, we can see a third of the state of Washington in orange here is the German chocolate cake. I mean, today we might think of not, instead of a German chocolate cake, we might think of Hershey's chocolate syrup. And having this Hershey's chocolate syrup, each flood basalt event is this flood basalt. It's this chocolate syrup that's creeping over the breakfast table. And it, it never covers the entire state. It pretty much gets to the edge of the orange that we see which, if you've been with me for a while, you know, is north of Spokane. We're tracing the edge of the chocolate syrup. There's the Columbia River itself, right on the edge of the Hershey's chocolate syrup, a.k.a. German chocolate cake, a.k.a. Columbia River Basalt Group, a.k.a. Flood Basalt. But where are we today, Northrop Canyon? Well, we're peeking a little hole. We're, li we're just taking a little peek. The chocolate layer is gone and we're peeking underneath the syrup and we're seeing now we're calling it in 1992 ti which is a tertiary intrusive uh oh now we're younger tertiary is in the cenozoic tertiary is younger than 66. and here in northrop canyon there's also pkm pre-tertiary metamorphic rock okay so like cretaceous metamorphic rock and younger than Cretaceous granites. Okay, I'm still confused, you say. I'm not sure I got the information I need. Let's pick up the pace, boy. Breeze is picking up. You can go to about the same vintage, but now a more accurate, a more detailed scale, a geologic map of Washington, just the northeastern quarter of the state also by the DNR, which has now been renamed the Washington Geological Survey. And that's really the map I want to show you. Okay, so what does it look like on that map? Let's come in. I'm ready for my close-up. Northrop Canyon has KJMI and EIDA. Hmm. Okay, so it's not all the same granite, and it's maybe not all granite. And you'll notice that there's other areas that have been mapped. Underneath Steamboat Rock, there's more of that KJMI. So basically, these are all granites but they're not all the same age. There's Cretaceous Jurassic granites and there's Eocene granites. I guess, says the mapper. So there's a lot of granite exposed here in the upper Grand Coulee area. There's the Grand Coulee Dam right there. Because the Ice Age floods have excavated or hauled away much of the German chocolate cake. So I've been working, I won't belabor this too much, but I've been working with these maps and trying to learn local names. There's dikes made out of dacite. There's dikes made out of dacite porphyry. There's trachyte dikes, rhyolite dikes, Cooper Mountain, heard of it. Locally, the granite of Swawilla or Swawea basin, granite of Coffee Lake. 
And then there's mixed igneous and metamorphic, like migmatites of Gibraltar rock. So there's a lot of local things to work out here. And my finishing statement is nobody has sampled this granite in Northrop Canyon, whether it's the older stuff or the younger stuff, and have gotten some detailed dates, some new uranium lead dates on them. All right, kids. Okay, granite, ooh, ooh, okay. I see quartz, I see feldspar, I see biotite. The point is, we're not that far from the North Cascades. So in a way, I'm starting to think about the North Cascades really for the first time in a couple of months. I've been out here screwing around with doing other things, but I'm, I'm realizing that Northrop Canyon might be an important place. Because yes, we can peel back the German chocolate cake here and reveal the pre-Miocene bedrock. Can we get some dates from these plutons here in Northrop Canyon and realize that they are part of the story that we have in the North Cascades, yes or no? Here's a reminder of the North Cascades, which is, you know, an hour drive to the west of here, basically. Uh, but we had our plutons. Look at the pink, different shades of pink and the blotches. The Eniat pluton, 72 million years. The Duncan Hill, 46 million years old. The Cooper Mountain, 48, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there's different ages of plutons. And then, yes, during the winter time, you and I were working with the crazy Eocene A to Z live stream series, and we realized that the Dream Team was working with, remember this? three magmatic flare-ups, a Cretaceous flare-up, an in-between times flare-up, for lack of a better term, that's me, and an Eocene flare-up. If I checked with Jeff Tepper, the guy who's been doing most of the work on these uh, hopping and skipping around to these different plutons in northeastern Washington, and he said, yeah, yeah, we haven't really sampled and gotten a good age from Northrop Canyon yet, and I'm curious now. I'm curious what the date might be for this granite right here. And you're like, oh, okay, I don't care why. I, why would this be such a big deal? Well, one thing for me is that remember, the Ice Age floods are ripping up not only basalt, but they're ripping up granite from this area and washing them downstream towards Ellensburg, towards Vantage, towards Tri-Cities in the Pasco Basin. And so, you know, for years people will say, well, there's a, there's a neurotic, right, from the Ice Age floods? Yes. Well, where exactly did that granite come from? And I would always say, well, the closest place, the closest place to here that has granite at the surface is Grand Coulee Dam area. And there we are, the upper Grand Coulee. But we don't have the detail of this bedrock here. Even if we got detail on the granite from the erratic, let's say 75 miles downstream, we don't have the, the, the detail here. Because the point is the granite of Northrop Canyon is of different ages. It's not all the same stuff. Probably not a surprise, but still worth thinking about. Sun's trying to poke through here. So I think we'll take a little walk. We'll combine our little geology lesson. With a little bit of a walk back down 
the old wagon road. Down there, let's go down through the trees and get a little bit closer view of the granite of Northrop Canyon underneath the remaining portion of the German chocolate cake. Granite. You can kind of see the erosional pattern, can't you? The granite is kind of these rounded, beveled surfaces, whereas the basalt in the background, much different set of shapes. Let's follow this trail for a while. Gonna be breezy up here, but a nice little shot of granite, granite, basalt capping, upper Grand Coulee in the distance. Got the place to myself. Saturday morning in April. The weather's the big reason for it, but this is not far away for some of you. This is all free and available to you to explore. And the flowers are just about to come out, as far as I can tell. But what do I know? It's amazing how little these granites have been studied from my point of view. And I'm just starting to compile what I can find, but to have the map showing such wildly different ages for these plutons, mostly because the dating techniques were not very precise, a generation or two ago, but also because uh, folks over here in the upper Grand Coulee country are mostly thinking Ice Age. They're mostly thinking the most recent 20,000 years. Uh, yes, if you saw the Brian Atwater video that I did from Steamboat Rock uh, almost a year ago. I really enjoyed that. And the first part of that video, Brian was talking about the earliest days of his career and a shock to me then, I am re remembering it again now, as I've been looking at some of these old geologic maps, the first project Brian had as a USGS geologist was to work with the, <laughs> work with the granites of Northern Washington. <laughs> and uh, and then he got interested in the sand poil arm of the Grand Coulee scene, but uh, in the in Missoula floods, in other words. But uh, I think the time is ripe. The time is right, either one, uh, for some igneous petrologists especially folks who are geochronologists, people who can get precise dates, to come back in here and work with these exposures. I think there's plenty of interesting problems for master's projects, master's thesis projects, or, or more. I don't know, does this country appeal to you? This kind of, this kind of walking? Okay, up onto the old wagon road. And as soon as we do that, we leave the granite and we're up into the overlying German chocolate cake, the Columbia River basalt lava. I don't have to break this open for you. You know what basalt looks like. Fine grained, no crystals to look at generally.
and those German chocolate cake layers used to be continuous across. And now look across the way, now we're seeing Steamboat Rock in its entirety. You're looking west. That entire thing is Steamboat Rock sitting out there in the middle of the upper Grand Coulee. And at the very base of Steamboat Rock is the granite. There's some more granite there. Granite, granite, granite. But then those that have been on top of Steamboat Rock know that if you're walking around on, on the very tippy top of Steamboat Rock, <laughs> there's granite erratics up there that were dropped on top of Steamboat Rock during the Ice Age. And you're like, how's that possible? How are you supposed to take granite from the bottom of Steamboat Rock and get it up on top? Well, it's an ice sheet story and uh, not our topic today. Well, as far as I can tell, you've got two hiking options if you take the bait and want to enjoy Northrop Canyon. I came up this uh, trail here. This is the old wagon road. And now I'm walking back down to the car, heading west. Steamboat Rock out ahead. But there's also the option to stay low and to wander amongst the trees and uh, other plants and granite in the floor of, of, uh, of Northrop Canyon as well. Okay, surprise ending. Before signing off with you, let me add a little bit from this famous location. Do you recognize it? That's Grand Coulee Dam. You're looking upriver, so there's a big reservoir behind the dam. And the point of including this is that are you aware that the Grand Coulee Dam was built and anchored in granite. Not made of granite, but anchored into granite. Like the local bedrock is not this crumbly basalt, but the same granite we've been talking about today. So I'm just a few minutes drive from Northrop Canyon, and I found this spot because Jeff Tepper University of Puget Sound found this spot and sampled with a student and he does have a precise age for the granite here at Grand Coulee Dam. So I think I want to show you inside the car with a couple of maps that I brought along. 
So if you recall, we were busy with Jeff Tepper last winter and his plots of many different plutons in eastern Washington, different ages. Lanthanum versus, ah, oh, forget it. I don't know what I'm talking about there, but here's what I want to say. Jeff Tepper was generous enough to share GPS location, sample ID numbers, and I marked on my phone, I punched this latitude and longitude into my phone to find this spot. He called this granite sample Manila Creek, and here's his precise date, 71.99 million years ago. Plus or minus, I kind of forget. He doesn't have Mike Eddy uh, accuracy, but he's he's got decent accuracy, way better than the maps we were talking about before. And so when we look at a hand-drawn sketch like this, we're here at Grand Coulee Dam. We are in one of these pink areas. This is just my generalized map showing plenty of Plutons that are in northern Washington that have escaped, yes, again, the German chocolate cake covering everything up. And last look. Come on, boy. If we're looking carefully at Grand Coulee Dam, and we are, we are just downriver. So again, this is the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Reservoir, or lake, which is artificial, of course, because of the dam in the river. Uh, well, we're just downriver of that, and we're looking carefully then at all this TKIA, which again, on this map from not that long ago, they're just saying, oh, I don't know, tertiary, Cretaceous, who knows? Well, Tepper and Eddie and others are starting to put some details on some of these ages. So, I know I'm not in Northrop Canyon, but I think I want to show you what this granite looks like. And I'm not saying that this granite here, even though it's very close to Northrop Canyon, is exactly the same type of granite that's at Northrop, but uh, it wouldn't be crazy to say we can bring this along. Okay, so this is handsome stuff. Can I zoom? Can I zoom some more? Am I getting greedy? Quartz felspar biotite. Classic look. I, this is so fresh looking here. I guess because it was blasted. I guess it was blasted, maybe, with the dam project. But I'm not even sure I need to use my hammer. This stuff is so fresh and good looking. But this is a much fresher, newer surface look than the granites we were looking at in Northrop uh, an hour ago in real time. There's another reason. There's another reason to look at these granites. And it's long range thinking now. But you know, I think, that we're going to be doing a new Baja BC A to Z live stream series. We're not going to start that till November. But plutons like this have been studied paleomagnetically. And depending on the age of the plutons, there's paleomagnetic signatures that are strange, and therefore the centerpiece of Baja BC. But if you get younger plutons, then suddenly the paleomag doesn't look weird at all. And we will need that Baja BC series to really understand 
the significance of that. Oh, I just feel like breaking something. Hang on. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to have granites on the brain, I think is my point. Granites and volcanics, but but the granites are, are kind of the centerpiece of the Baja BC discussion. And as I learn about paleomag leading up to this winter and during this winter series, I need to know some of these plutons. I need to know their ages, the best ages that we have, knowing that many of them don't have good ages. So Ice Age floods, we need to talk about granites. The Eocene, we need to talk about granites. Baja BC, we need to talk about granites. Exotic terrains, we need to talk about granites. There are so many different reasons to care about these plutons, these former liquid magma chambers that are now cold, hard, solid rock. So, surprise ending. Thank you for watching this program on Northrop Canyon, even though we finish at Grand Coulee Dam. Thank you. I love you. Oh no, you know what? Hang on. So there is a weathered surface. There's a natural surface to the granite like we saw in Northrop. This is an artificial surface. Clearly they have blasted this off. I don't know why, but maybe for building material or something. So. Thank you, I love you, and goodbye from Northrop Canyon, USA.